these are not quite so, but I can still see the manager sitting there. What a dear guy. But it's making a difference. But you go with Jerry, who I'm sure is occasionally in the locker room at the high school football games or such. And it's halftime and they aren't doing too well. How's the landing, Jerry? It's not ready for really ready for Sunday school, is it? No, not at all. But if you're going to make a film that relates to pagan kids today, you're going to relate to this audience, how are you going to do it? Did some of you see Love Note last night? They really tried hard. As nearly as we can know, we, we have succeeded in a measure. Yet I would venture to say that there are high schools in America where you can show Love Note, and by the, by the end of the first reel, half, half the audience will walk out. They walk out. And right? How do we make a film to relate to unsaved kids? Oh, it needs to be done. Jeff, Jerry and I, Jerry is helping us to do a film for junior high, and we're really excited about it. We have got to do it. As soon as we get the courage, Jerry. The old economics just go down, 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 down. But we've got to do it. And we will do it. We'll go to our investors and we'll say, look, we want all of us stick our necks out. You want to stick your neck? We've got a precious bunch of investors. We've never financed our projects. Now the nation has been through investments. We've had wonderful relationships through the years with a number of quite affluent people. We've just been thrilled to be part of our investment program. Let me just give you uh, my philosophy on this. I'll never schedule these for 45 minutes on this. Um, my philosophy is this, that in the most ungodly group, let me give you an example. At one time, I interviewed, I was looking for material for a story, and in one very large city, I interviewed one of the most, one of the most devastating gangs. I met with them, I was with these guys. One of the fellows actually looked like more like an animal than hungry like a human. There were a couple of prostitutes there, young girls, nice girls. They were. Because they knew they weren't there as prostitutes. They were there as kids trying to help somebody make a religious movie. They were thrilled to help make a religious movie. And as we talked to them and asked them, uh, how, how do we make how do we make this story? How do we form this story? And I said to them, you know, you know, and, and you know enough about the church, some of you kids, that we can't make a film that shows uh, some of the things that you that you guys get into. And I wink at him and kid him and say that you're ashamed of doing it. And not even point one guy's hey, you're going to get squared up, aren't you? Or the police lock you up for 20 years? Yep, yep, you're going to get squared up. These are great kids. They're just human beings, funded. I was with them for about three hours. But I said, isn't this true that even among you kids here, there are some of you who deep down in your heart are hungry for God. You should have seen their faces. You should have seen their faces. And that's my contention, that in every high school and in every group of, of kids, and even in some of the hardcore sectors of our cities, there are young people who are hungry for God. And they're the ones we went after with love them. And we're hearing of quite a few high school kids who come to the Lord Jesus through that simple film. Audience. The next uh, most important thing, the two things that, that uh, uh, the three things, and sometimes these next two are tied together, a good idea. An idea that, that begs to be be put on on screen. <coughs> oh, some of the early Christian films. Boy meets girl, meets meets drunkard, meets evangelist. Boy and girl walk hand in hand toward the setting sun. Setting sun, you know. <coughs> Good idea. Love no was a fair idea. We started from a basic idea. Written by a 20 year old guy, as Wayne may have, may have told you last night. The third factor, and of course it belongs up here, 
message. We painfully say sometimes that the average American Christian today wants television with Bible verses attached. He wants TV drama with Bible verses attached. How do you so vitally integrate the Christian message that it's really part of the story? You think that within some, I, I said that wasn't very close to love one and dearly ask this, you feel that perhaps, at least for a certain measure, we were able to integrate the message and make it part of the story? How do you think we did it? We didn't make it. We failed. Okay? Two of them think we failed. Okay, that's valid. And others of you perhaps wonder if we failed. But thank God, there's some pretty sharp youth leaders in this country that tell us at least that they think we succeeded. And so we can't let them all and we honor your reaction. We honor it very much. Okay, but anyway, those are the three factors that with which we must deal. I'm just going to give you the logistics of how we go about developing a There's a, there's a pencil and paper element in here that I can't really illustrate, but you begin making gists. You can go directly to the, to the aspect I'm going to show you here in a moment, but quite often I'm, I'm jotting down ideas. Can you believe I don't have my little pocket? recorder in my pocket because I forgot my regular recorder and I was dictating some letters this morning and so it's okay. Can you hear that? Is that one you use? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, hold it up, Don. Don carries this. And he doesn't trust his memory. And he can't read his own writing. So I don't know. <coughs> but when he gets an idea, he doesn't fail. He puts it down on that recorder. It's so important. If you're, going to, if you're going to become a communicator, you have got to have a storehouse where you keep ideas. You've got to have it. If you don't have ideas gathering, you probably haven't progressed very far in becoming a successful communicator along this line. You must begin to build a treasury of ideas. I wish I had time to tell you how uh, I took a, an idea uh, and developed a, a kid's western, not a film. We would like, we got a script for it to be in the film, but we probably would never produce it unless things change drastically. But I don't know how many times it was reprinted. At least 15 times it was republished by other publications after its original publication, which made me very, very happy. But I, I, I'd gotten some ideas and I jotted them down. Sometimes you will put ideas together. You, have, have you, you all have Somerset Moms. Have you seen Somerset of Moms, a writer's notebook? It's at the library. Yeah, it's worth an hour to browse through it and see that all the little notations that Somerset Moms made, thoughts that would come to his mind. When you begin this process, then wonderful things are going to happen. You're going to begin to live with your material. I'm writing a, a script now, I'm writing the shooting script for the, for the research we did down in Transcat. And my wife has learned that she can look right at me and talk to me, and I can seem to be listening. I hear a word she says. And I can't help that. And, and, and if I had someone else other than she, um, other than her, if I had someone else, uh, it could be a sad situation. <clears throat> I heard of a, of a literary home, a publishing set up or something, in which a very dear family member had died. And an outstanding writer came to visit that family. And everybody was very quiet, very sober. There was no laughter. They were just, <coughs> just in the throes of their sorrow. And as they sat at the dinner table, the, uh, the writer was sitting there, and all of a sudden he burst out into hilarious laughter. And the family looked at him, shocked, 
offended? He said, oh, please forgive me. Please forgive me. But the lead character of the novel I'm writing, he said something very funny. <laughs> That's what happens. When you begin to get into the, into the, into the development of ideas, you begin to, to get them down. Okay, so let's say you've got research notes. I usually have a pretty big supply of research notes you know, from which I work. You're very glad to have too many. If you've seen our Hudson Taylor film, I have a big card file on Hudson Taylor. Fanny Crosby, a bigger one. And other things. We've, we have developed a script on Susanna Wesley. We're quite happy with it. We think that it's, it's needed today. Uh, in the, the abortion area, whatever your position is on abortion. Can I tell you my theology on abortion? You promise not to get mad at me? See, I'm not a theologian, I'm a laologian. And my laology on abortion is on, 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 on uh, abortion is this. When God is making the wrath of man to praise man. Do not approve of abortion. The whole misunderstand. But isn't it likely when we get to heaven, there will be a vast meadow full of happy, laughing little souls. They might not have gone there. They might not have gone there. I don't know theology, and I'm not a theologian. I'm a laologian. But I just envision the possibility of a great host of little souls that... I see I'm getting in trouble. I forgot something to do. Let's get back to script. Okay. Um, what I do in developing a script is I take a piece of paper it's a lot cheaper than film. And uh, actually, I, I do it like this, but I, just for sake of illustration, and sometimes, I do like this. It's going to be very elementary. But what I'm showing you, so it made it possible for me to develop a script. I would try, I would try to, to get myself organized, and, and I just had all manner of trouble so I developed this simple old basic procedure. Okay, here they are. You go put the paper. And I write on there how I see my story open. A 30-minute motion picture, for some reason, usually has about 35 and 40 little cards like this. How much money have I spent on film? Not a penny. And if budgets are close, that's kind of good, isn't it? With video, this may change some, since we can erase and things like this. But when we're making, as we do a good bit of overseas, we're going to try to find time to at least show you the living book film script that God has used enormously. It touched so many people across the world. Uh, there must be close to 5,000 copies of Living Book in circulation today. <coughs> All right, I'm working on this, dreaming on it. It's good to put it away for a day or so, if you can. I get hot on something I can't put it away. You take it back and you're just going through these, going, making changes, get little ideas for dialogue, and I get some things all of mine, of course I write on the side. Sometimes I got so much material, for this one I'll do a, a second card and I'll call it 3A. But it's 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 a clip for three and it's part of part of that section. But before I go to the next stage, I review this and review this. And all of a sudden, I see a, a fault, and I've had this fault in many of my productions. I've tried to be as gracious as I know how toward a group of people that, are, that have just about spent the last 35 years uh, in certain sections of the Christian world telling people why Ken Anderson is such a lousy AV producer. I guess I do. The only difference is we're still here and going to be. If you want to come to a, if the Lord has not returned 
I never say if he delays his coming because I don't believe he's going to come around schedule. But if the Lord has not returned, uh, you want to come six years from now, we'll be here. Because God's going to take care of this organization. It's going to be wonderful things. You see the, the what's the good, what's the good uh, word I want here? The, um, oh, the first robin of spring. What's the word? Sargingers. We see them. Thank you. This is a source. Thank you. Uh, okay. So, uh, we'll, but we're working on this here now, and, and we've got Ken Anderson's fault of getting a story in the way too slow. You know, just not getting into gear. I'm really trying to correct that. I'm hard. And in the African scripts that we've developed, uh, all I do is go and I'm the Emanuelises, and it's just fantastic. You go to Zimbabwe, for example, and surround yourself with about 20 kids, and they tell the story. And they write, they decide on the scenes, and they tell you what the characters say. And you just help them keep it in order. That's great sport. I've done this in the Philippines, I've done it in Brazil, I've done it in Vietnam, um, before the war ended, I've done it in Transkai, and we're doing, and we're doing other things. So you say, you know, it just doesn't open right. It's just a lot of work. So we tear that one up. And we say, you know, actually down here, number seven, boy, if we gave that a little different twist, that's the way to start this thing. And you know, this isn't all that bad, this little part here. We could add that down here to four. Following, and developing, and dreaming. And you, and, you, and you spend perhaps your major amount of time on these card files. Going over them, going over them, going over them. And all the time, all the time, you are thinking, we you ask your audience, <coughs> but you're thinking visually. You're thinking your audience, you're thinking your message, but you must think visually. You are not writing a book. You are not writing a short story. You are writing something that is going to appear visually. Keep that in mind. Don't ever let it get away from your mind. And when you do your finished script, that finished script is a visual implement. It's visual. It's so important. The visual presentation. Okay, but finally, you have your, your card files ready. And you're going to begin your script. Beyond, are you going to be talking about... He's not in here. I would not imagine that. There, there are uh, some people here that have storyboards. Who has a storyboard? I'll be passing some out. You will be also. Okay. Okay. You want to check with some of these people on storyboards. But before you go to this stage, we like to go to this stage. And you've found out what your number one is. Maybe you've changed, uh, maybe you've changed uh, four and made it 11. You know, maybe number nine has become number two, the modifications and such. But now then you begin to, to spell it out. How much money do you spend on the phone? Yeah. On actors, if you're going to use that. Yeah. <coughs> they're making an audiovisual. They certainly have. They're much better, perhaps, than you've been privileged to do thus far. I apologize for this being so simple, but you know, David made a mistake <coughs> doing it. He made 23 Psalms or something. But really, he's worthy of the Bible. He's at Silks, right? A very simple procedure, but it, is, it literally transformed my experience in script writing. Are am I safe to say that if there are people here that would like example scripts, we can provide them for them? What scripts can we provide? How many of you here might like to have an example script? And any particular one or not particular? If you saw a love note, would you want the love note script? Don't get particular. 
Don't be particular. I can't promise particular. Whatever she gets for you, huh? But it looks like about 20. I'll set some back here. And yeah, we'll get some scripts for you that you can take. <laughs> and I'll warn you that the way we set up scripts <coughs> isn't quite like Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Hollywood doesn't number the scenes and sets the reason. The reason we do it is because of a smaller organization that makes it easier for the work crew if they have scenes in it. Yes? Oh, I have four minutes. Great. Okay. It's all right? When you get to this stage, you can start letting people read. Be careful when you read your material. I have worked in organizations where there was a, for want of a better expression, a professional malcontent who opposed everything. I'll tell you some rather amusing anecdotes about God help us. We've gotten away <coughs> months after we were on a production. I remember one particularly from a missionary leader who wrote and said, I am unable to sleep. Forgive me if this sounds like we're some kind of saints, because we aren't. But we do try to have a good relationship toward the people with whom we work. One person wrote and said, I haven't been able to sleep, but I write to this letter and ask forgiveness. Because I just, I just kind of felt left out on the production, and you fellas came in, and the mission heads were, were really running this thing, and, and, and I, was, I was something less than exemplary in my attitude toward you. Please forgive me. And then we also thank us that we've been patient and so forth. You know, the people who work with you on projects are going to be people that are, that are in harmony with you. Like my dear black brother, Bill Pinnell, at, at, uh, at Fuller Seminary, what a dear guy. Bill's theory is, if any two people can get through to Jesus, they can get through to each other. And if people are really through to Jesus, they'll get through to each other. And so let's find people that are really at his throne, as we are at his throne. And, uh, but but as I like people that, that are that are that are incisive. Uh, I was in London, England, just recently, and, and I had a, a, a very sharp audiovisual man just tear the the. I told him just tear the Susanna script to shreds. He just ticked a couple of places. I was kind of pleased. He said he wouldn't tell me it was a good script. Good night. An Englishman telling an American that, but he isn't a good friend. But he said, hey, it's, it's, it's got real good possibilities, Dad. Real good possibilities. So, uh, probably we could get to a Susanna script and not finished yet. I mean, there could be some more work on it. But anyway, uh, this is what we go over with, with our advisors. And we go over this and get feedback. Then we go from that. <coughs> How many of you here are going to be developing slide films? Well, the end of slide film is fast. But leaving, isn't it? Let me just give you a, an example of a slide film, since you can get the other example from, from Margaret. Fair enough? Let's say you're doing a slide film. Here's your page. We've really done it for years. <laughs> it must be good. Picture, sound. And then, working from here, we begin to describe our pictures, each picture. And this is the storyboard process? No, not the storyboard. Yet. Don, are you going to be talking storyboard? storyboard? You will be talking? I will be. Okay, you'll be getting storyboard information. And then over here, Don will tell you, put as little sound other than the moods and the music and such, as you can. You all know that you don't say, this is a boy all walking along the river. And we see him walking along the river. Here he turns and goes on a path. And we see him turn and go on a path. Here he meets a dog, and we see the dog. You know. uh, oh, I wish we had time to talk about the, the, the inner feel that you're trying to put into the nation. Take some of my time if you need it. No. No, no, that's kind of good. You, you've done these things, just take, take from here and go on. Same thing. <clears throat> but anyway, notice now even here, you can make changes. You still may not quite like the way some things are developed. Change it. 